All right, today's lesson is going to be on free energy, cell potential, and equilibrium calculations. What I'm going to do is going to show you how you use the cell potential to calculate the free energy and then to use the free energy to calculate calculate the equilibrium. And then I'm going to show you qualitatively, qualitatively, yeah, not quantitatively, uh, how you can determine uh, the way reactions are going to shift and, and change and will cell potential go up, will cell potential go down. All right, so here's the example. We've got uh, um, this reaction of zinc ions reacting with copper to produce zinc solid and copper two ions. We're going to calculate the free energy for the reaction below. Now, I'm assuming that you've already uh, can calculate this for the overall cell. All right, so I'm not going to bother doing this calculation. Uh, I did that in a previous lesson. So the cell potential comes out to be a negative 1.01 volts. The question that they want to know is, will the zinc ions plate out of the copper strip? Well, if this is negative, then you should know that the reaction is going in this direction and not producing the product. So therefore, the answer to this is quickly no. But I'm going to continue on because I want to go ahead and explain this a little more. Uh, if you know that the cell potential is negative, then you know that your free energy is positive, not thermodynamically favorable. Reaction will not shift to the right. It will stay on the left side. And therefore, K has to be less than 1 because the reaction is favoring the reactants, not the products. Okay? All right, so if I want to figure out the free energy value, the free energy is negative N times Faraday's constant times the cell potential. All right, so just plug in all the information I have. Now, where do I get N? N is the number of moles of electrons that are transferring. Since the zinc is going from plus 2 to 0, it has to transfer 2 electrons. It will gain 2 electrons. It's not going to because it's not spontaneous, but that's the idea is that it wants to or is attempting to do that. Okay? Copper is going to go from zero charge to two plus. Again, transfer of two electrons. So N is equal to two moles of electrons. All right, so I'm going to plug that in. Negative two moles of electrons. Don't let this control your significant figures because that's an exact number. We're saying it's exactly two moles of electrons transferring over. Faraday's constant is 96,500 uh, joules, I'm sorry, uh, coulombs per mole of electron. What Faraday found is that how much charge, how much coulombic charge is inside of one mole of electrons. So if one mole of electrons moves, this is the charge that's going to pass through the wire as it happens. And then we use our voltage. Now our voltage is negative 1.10 volts. Now again, a volt, just to remind you, a volt is equal to joules per coulomb. And this is important because when I put that unit in here, my overall unit, coulombs cancel, moles cancel, my unit for free energy is going to be in joules, not kilojoules. So we got to make sure that we keep that in mind when we do this. Negative and a negative, don't forget to put those negatives in that can throw out this whole problem big time. Remember, you already know this going in. You know this going into this problem, so it should all correlate together. So positive and the answer to this will be 212,300 joules. You can convert that to 202.3 kilojoules if you want. It's up to you. It depends on the problem. Now, in this case, it's positive, so therefore it's not thermodynamically favorable. It's favoring the reactants, not the products. All right, now what I can do is, since I know free energy, I can go back to the material that I had from last chapter, and I know that free energy under standard conditions is equal to R. T, natural log of K. If I want to solve for K, I'm going to undo everything. So we have E to the negative free energy, standard conditions, over RT. Plug everything in. I'm going to assume that this problem is at 298 Kelvin. They don't really say, but I'm just going to go with that assumption to make this problem work out. Negative 212,300 joules right because I want to make sure that it matches my R the R that I'm using is 8.314 joule mole Kelvin okay that's the one I'm using here so I'm gonna put 8.314 times the temperature which is 298 Kelvin so therefore this will cancel it leaves me with units of joules per mole alright so those are gonna well actually it's well right joules per mole but the joules and per mole kinda of cancel out and you end up with a value of K that is equal to 6.10 times 10 to the minus 38. And as we said before, K should be less than 1. And this is extremely small, very small. Uh, and therefore, again, favors the products. I'm sorry, favors the reactants, not the products. 
Okay, so notice everything correlates together. Negative tells us that it's not spontaneous, that it's not thermodynamically favorable. Positive free energy, small k value. Okay, what we're going to look at next is what happens when we are not at standard conditions. So remember, standard conditions are when we're at one molar uh, concentration for solutions and a one ATM for uh, our pressures. So what we're going to look at is when we change those concentrations. So I'm going to take the same example that we did before, but I'm going to change the reaction a little bit. I reversed it so that it would be uh, thermodynamically favorable, and uh, I also am changing the concentration of the copper 2 plus ions from 1 molar, which would be under the standard conditions, to 3 molar which is now under non-standard conditions. So when we're under standard conditions, we're going to use that degree symbol. So that's what that little degree symbol means, that we're using one molar concentration and one ATM for the pressure. So we're going to be under non-standard conditions. So when you don't see that degree symbol and that degree symbol is gone, we're under non-standard conditions. All right, so let's uh, first recap what we did. Since I changed the reaction around a little bit, I just need to recalculate uh, or reevaluate the, uh, the values. So I'm going to write that down really quick. Okay, so these are the, the values that I determined when we were under standard conditions uh, for the reaction as it's written. So everything is pretty much reversed. So my, my cell potential is now positive because it's now thermodynamically favorable. My free energy is negative and it's going to be releasing 212 kilojoules of energy. And K is going to now be greater than 1 because I now have... Um, inversed the, the, the value for K because I reversed the reaction. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happened when we were under standard conditions first of all. So when we are under standard conditions, let me just write this down here really quick, our Q value came out to be equal to 1. All right, and the reason for that is because my cell potential was positive. I'm sorry, my cell potential, my, my concentration of the copper ion was one. So remember, Q is going to be calculated just like we do for K. Q is always going to be your products over your reactants. The only difference is that we're plugging in our values under the initial conditions. So originally, in the problem before, I had one molar, so therefore I had one molar of the copper and one molar of the zinc, so therefore I got one divided by one, which gives me a one for Q. Now, since Q is going to be a lot less than K under these conditions, the reaction is going to shift to the right. That's, that's basically what this tells us, is that it shifts to the right. So therefore what that means is that under standard conditions, the reaction is going to produce those products and I'm going to see this, uh, the, the copper metal plating out, whereas before I didn't see the zinc plating out because the reaction favored the opposite direction. So in this case, I'm now going to go ahead and get the products to form because of the fact that I have Q equal 1. Okay, so those are under standard conditions. So under standard conditions, this reaction produces a voltage of 1.1 volt, and it will produce 202, 212 kilojoules of energy. All right, now when we're under these conditions here where we now change the concentration um, of the copper to 3, remember, so we're going to have our concentration of the zinc 2 plus over the concentration of the copper if I go ahead and put these values in, what I'm going to end up with is 1 over 3 molar, because I just changed the concentration of this to, to 3, I now get 0.333 essentially for Q, because of the fact that I now have a third of what I had before when I had Q equal 1. So now we come back to Q and we say okay, Q is less than K, it's still less than K, but here's the difference. Um, Oh, let's say that again. Q is less than K, so it's going to shift to the right again. So it's still going to shift to the right, but the difference here is that now that I added more of the, the copper, it's going to shift further to the right. I know it kind of seems kind of strange, but we're further away from the equilibrium point. The whole point of all of this stuff is that when we hit the equilibrium, the reactions will no longer produce energy. So the further away we are from the equilibrium point, the more energy we get out of this. So what, was, what will happen here is, I probably should have changed this to copper, by the way, I just noticed that, is that when this reaction shifts to the right, the copper will plate out. And I'm going to get a lot of, you know, more copper to plate out than I did under the standard conditions because I'm further away. I'm going to come back to that in just a second. So as a result of having Q set up the way it is, I'm going to get more copper to produce. I'm going to get more copper solid to form than I would under standard conditions. Okay, uh, Free energy, what's going to happen to that? Well, now because I'm further 
away from equilibrium, I'm going to get more free energy out of the system as well as more voltage. So my free energy is going to become more negative as a result of this, and my free energy and my, and my cell potential will be a higher voltage. K is going to remain constant because I did not change temperature. If I change temperature, then I change K, but otherwise the equilibrium constant will remain the same. So let me try to explain this. Think of K as, as a particular point, right? And this is when K is equal, you know, K is equal to 3 point, or 1.6 times 10 to the 37th power. Okay, so that's, that's where I'm at here. Q, when it was equal to 1, was this distance away from K, right? So I have this much room to travel to get to K, right? Because as the reaction progresses, think about what's going to happen. Copper ions are going to go down and the zinc ions are going to go up. So as a result of that, if the copper ions keep going down and the zinc keeps going up, eventually I'll get to the point where Q is equal to K and then the reaction stops. So nothing is happening at this point. The reaction is finished. There's no energy. Now what I did in the next problem, when I changed the concentration of, of the copper ions, my Q was now even smaller. So now it's 0 0.333. So now I've got a greater distance to get to the equilibrium point. So therefore, I've got more energy that's going to be transferred as a result of that. So the further away we are from that value of K, the more energy we can get out of our systems. We don't want to be at the equilibrium point because at equilibrium, everything is done. We want to be further away from that. So if you think about it as like a hill, and you got K as the bottom of the hill. Like think about a rock sitting right here. Well, a rock has got a certain amount of energy to get to this point. Well, this is K. This is what the value of, this is what the equilibrium constant is, where there's no energy in our system, and the reaction pretty much stops at that point. Okay? Now, if Q is equal to 1, it's on this side, right? The ball would be right here. So there's some energy that can be transferred for the, the system to get to the equilibrium. Right? So Q is less than K, so therefore it's going to shift in this direction and fall to this point. Now when Q equals K, that's when we're at this point here. So if I set up a scenario where I plugged in a concentrations that would equal K, then nothing would happen because our system would be, the, be here. Question is, when I put in these concentrations, where am I at? You know, where am I at? Am I, am I here at the bottom of the hill or am I at the top of the hill? Now, when I came over here and I did this calculation, when I changed it from one molar to three molar, Q was up here. It was actually further away. So now I can get more energy out of my system. So therefore, I've got a further distance to travel to get down here. Now, we can go in the opposite direction and say there's a hill going up in this direction. Because what if I did this in a different way so that Q actually came out to be equal to, let's just say, 1.0 times 10 to the 40th power? Well, now Q is going to be greater than K. So now I can get some energy out of the system. But the problem is it's going to go in the opposite direction. Because now instead of it going and producing products, it's going to produce the reactants. So in this case, it's going to produce in the opposite direction because of that. So Q over here, if I made Q even larger by putting in certain concentrations so that Q would come out greater, I would end up with more energy. So I'm getting more energy transfer as I go from here to here, the energy keeps increasing. Same thing here, but I'm going the opposite direction. And that's what equilibrium and all this stuff is about, is the further away we are from the equilibrium point, the more energy we can get out of our systems. So under these conditions, under the way everything is written, I'm going to want to increase the concentration. And think about it. It makes sense. If I put more copper 2 plus ions in here, I'm going to get more out of the system. I'm going to get more energy to come out of the system. If I put more of the zinc in here, I'm not going to get as much to come out of the system because it's already, it favors the products already. It's already favoring and being further down here at the bottom. Okay, so hopefully that's enough to kind of get you started. We can continue this uh, conversation a little bit later. But um, so what you want to do is figure out what, you know, what, what's going to happen under standard conditions. You're not going to have to figure this out mathematically to the, you know, the, the, num the, ah, the numerical values. What you're going to have to figure out is just will more energy be produced, less energy be produced. What gets confusing is the free energy because it's negative. So you would say that the negative, you know, the free energy would become more negative and more energy would be released. My cell potential would go up and I would get a more voltage out of the system as a result of that. All right. So I will see you guys later.